Hello, Sagittarius viewers. So the last reading I did, I was getting that your person is going through a dark night of the soul. Um, going through, or you could be, you know, you or your person, maybe even both, you guys might be mirroring each other's energy. But I was getting that there's a major spiritual shift going on and someone's wanting to apologize and make things right. For those of you that follow me, um, that follow my regular Sagittarius readings, you know, it's it's been a um, an ongoing story of someone that has, you know, commitment issues, uh, lots of wounds from um, childhood, from, you know, toxic relationships, from, you know, whatever they've been through in their lives. And it's like they, they want a family and they want a home deep down, but it's just that commitment scares them. They don't know how to accept that kind of love, you know? So this is someone that maybe moves from place to place a lot or they, you know, jump from one relationship to the next. Um, it's like they can never really settle down or commit. It's like they always, it's like they're running from something, you know? They always just have to go, go, go. And, um, but they're tired, you know, they're exhausted and they're lonely and they're, you know, they're wanting love. They're wanting to settle down. It's just, it's not an energy that they're used to. It's like, they're, they're just afraid of it, you know, but it's like deep down, they really do want that family and that home and that commitment, but they're just so lost and they don't really know how to have that with someone, you know, it's like, they just sabotage it. So just a quick update for those of you that are new to the channel. For those of you that are watching me for at least a few months, you know, this has been an ongoing story. Your person has been working on themselves, um, you know, a lot this past year. There's been a lot of, you know, 2020 was really heavy for them. There was a lot of really significant life changes that your person went through last year. And, you know, it's been a continuous story. It's been it's been up and down, you know, some some readings I'll get that they're open and ready to come back around but then other readings it's like they're kind of scared they're a little confused but overall I've said that I've said I would say that they've made a lot of progress um they really have been working on themselves they really have done some deep soul searching they they have really been introspective and I feel like this is kind of the final major phase that a lot of them are going through is the dark night of the soul um maybe some of them you know just couldn't learn their lessons the easy way so it's like they're they're hitting rock bottom now. Um, and it's it's like a, a death and rebirth process that they're, you know, going through this this metaphysical metaphorical um death and rebirth, basically, is is the energy that I'm feeling here. I'm feeling a lot of um, you know, it's an ongoing story, like I said. So I would I would check my other videos too if this is resonating with you, because you 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 know, some of the videos I've done in the past, I really go in depth into, um, you know, just some of the things that they've been through, some of the things that they want you to know. And I'm feeling a lot of pain from them right now. I'm feeling a lot of regret. I'm going to pull some cards too. I primarily channel, but I also pull cards. But I'm feeling a lot of pain and regret. So I feel like they're really, I don't know if you guys just had an argument recently or some of you aren't in contact and you haven't even talked to them for a long time, but feel like they're thinking about like a conversation you had or something you said to them or maybe something just happened in their life like with their family or something I don't know I just feel like the energy of like pain like I see them crying I see them really regretting something like they're they're really vulnerable right now they're really feeling alone right now they're really feeling vulnerable right now some of them might be thinking that they don't have another chance with you because maybe it's been a while since you guys have talked. Maybe there was some miscommunication or anger or arguments last time you talked. Or maybe they ghosted you and they're kind of thinking like, well, crap, I can't really just like message. They can't just message you out of nowhere if they ghosted you, right? Like they don't, they don't know how you'd react. But they're really vulnerable. I think this might be the most vulnerable I've ever felt them, actually, because it's been a continuous energy where it's like they've been working on themselves, you know, and that's, you know, true healing is messy. True healing isn't just like, oh, positive thinking and just, you know, like a straight linear path. It's like, no, it's up and down. Real healing is is it's chaotic. It's messy, you know. Like your person has days when they feel happy and spiritual and on top of the world and they want to travel and experience life and, you know, life is beautiful and they have this new perspective. 
And then they have days when they're just like, just miserable and sad and, you know, like in this energy of, you know, regrets and nostalgia and like, oh my gosh, I've messed my life up. I'm getting older. I've made so many mistakes. I've been such a bad person, you know, and, and healing too, like, if they're healing from things that they've done in the past, like ghosting people, maybe not just you, but maybe multiple people that they've shut out or that they've ghosted or opportunities that they've passed up because of their ego, you know, that that guilt can be really heavy because it's like they're coming, your person is basically coming back in touch with who they are on a soul level. I think that they lost, I think that you saw that when you guys were together or when you guys were talking, or maybe you just got like a glimpse of it, um, maybe like as an empath, you just kind of felt that energy, like you could get a sense of who they really are deep down. And it's hard because you don't want to get caught up in that energy either, though, even though your person is getting back in touch with their soul and who they really are. A lot of people don't a lot of people just suppress their soul for the rest of their lives. So it's like, don't get as an empath, don't get caught up in that energy of, of who they could be or the potential or who they used to be. But, um, but in this, in this specific case, if this is your story, I actually do feel that energy is, you know, it's the exception. It's the rare time where it's actually warranted energy, if that makes sense. Um, cause I'm feeling that energy really strongly of, of, um, of guilt right now. Not just with you, like there might be some things that they feel guilty about that they said or that they did to you, like ghosting or just not being there for you or just not being themselves. But I feel like it's in general, like they're like nostalgic, like maybe going through like a kind of midlife crisis kind of energy right now, which would make sense since I got the dark end of the soul a couple weeks ago. Um, but there's like there could be regrets involving, you know, family, friends, um, career opportunities that they missed. Just, just things, thinking about, you know, just really in the, in their head about things that they've said and done and just really feeling a lot of pain, like, you know, because that's part of healing. Like, if they, if they went down a different path than what they were originally supposed to go down, like, what their soul wanted them to go down, then it's like, they, it makes sense. You know, it's, it's hard for them to, to, it, it, you know, when you, you know, they're coming back to themselves, it's so it's difficult. It's difficult for them to come back to themselves and kind of face what they've been running from because they've been running for a long time. They've been, you know, going from place to place or relationship to relationship, just trying to avoid what's going on inside themselves. And now they're really being forced to face everything that's going on inside themselves. And it's, it's painful for them. Um, if you would like an in-depth reading, if you want me to go more in depth into if this is your person, you want me to go more in depth and look into, you know, the connection between you two, what's going on with them, whatever you want to know, just send me an email. My email address is below in the description box. But um, but yeah, anyway, I just feel this, I feel this strong energy of of regret, of nostalgia, of, you know, I see them crying, I see a lot of pain. And like I said, I don't think it's just you. I do think there's something specific with you, like something they said or did. They're upset about that they did. Like they're feeling, they're really kind of hating themselves for that. But I feel like it's some things with like family too, or maybe like with friends or something. Cause I feel like maybe they were just kind of like a douchebag to their friends in the past. Like they pushed them away and they're kind of regretting that. Um, but yeah, it's part of the healing process. You know, like I said, healing is messy. It's, it's, it's just part of it. It's like, they're in that energy where they're like, you know what? I don't want to run anymore. I want to be vulnerable. I can't run the rest of my life. Like they're exhausted from running from everything their whole life. They're exhausted from ghosting people their whole life. You know, they're exhausted from not being able to just slow down and settle down and catch their breath and always, it's like they've been trying to avoid what's going on inside themselves. So they just have to go to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Like they can't just relax and they're, they're, they hit rock bottom. They're exhausted now, you know, and they're just, yeah, they're, they're, they're getting back in touch with their soul. Like they're, they're having, they have some time to heal now and really think, really be introspective and think about what they've said and done in the past. And they're having a lot of regrets and they're really, um, becoming a better person. I really feel like they're becoming better, a better person. Cause I feel a lot of empathy is coming up a lot of things that they used to try to justify in the past. Like, Oh, I had to, I had to ghost this person cause it was the wrong timing or, or it was too much for me. Or, you know, I had to ignore my family cause they were being too dramatic or I had to do this. I had to do that. They're not really making excuses anymore. They're actually really owning it. And they're like, Oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I said that to that person. I can't believe I pushed my family away. I can't believe I, 
can't believe I did that. Like, why would I ever do that? Like they're in like a different perspective. Like they're becoming their true selves. You know, they're like, they're feeling, so they're feeling all this pain and regret because they're like, oh my gosh, who was that? That wasn't me. Like, it's like they lost themselves. Um, some of them might've had attachments on them and they might've gotten rid of the attachments or it could just be their ego too, but something was blocking them from their soul. And now it's like, they've stopped and they're, it's like, they're just, they're forced to, you know, could be with, with, I don't know, like with everything going on right now, maybe they're just, they, maybe they're not working right now as much, or maybe they're not, it's like, they're not able to go out and party like they used to. So they're kind of forced to just stay at home and think about things. So they're really in this in, introspective, nostalgic energy. Um, and yeah, just lots and lots of guilt and regret. Um, but it's really good though, because it's like, that means that they're feeling empathy. That's, that means that they're taking responsibility. That means that they're not identifying with the person that hurt other people, you know, like they're not identifying with that energy anymore. They're like, oh my gosh, that was me. I did that. I can't believe that. I want to make it better. Um, I don't want to be that person ever again. Like, like they're really, their soul is loud right now. Their soul is coming through. Like they're really, they're in a very beautiful, just very just like raw emotion, just pure energy. Like just, just their soul is just very loud. Like they're very emotional, very vulnerable right now. Very, um, very fragile, very open, very sensitive to everything. That could be why they're not messaging you as well. They might just be so sensitive that it's like every little thing hurts their feelings right now. Cause they're so, I just see them crying. Like they're just so emotional. Um, so that it might be another reason why they're not messaging. They might just feel like they don't have a chance again. Maybe they messed up too much for some of them. But, but yeah, like I said, it's been a continuous story with, with these Sagittarius fears. It's, it's been, you know what I mean? Like healing is messy, you know? Um, in a couple weeks I could get that their, you know, their pride is acting up and they're confused, you know, but it's like, it's part of the breakdown process. It's like their guides have been breaking them down the past year or so, um, and forcing them to come face to face, to forcing them to slow down and come face to face with themselves and do the deep healing that they have been avoiding pretty much their whole lives. So, you know, that healing process started probably like a year ago or maybe, you know, somewhere around that time. Like I said, it's, you know, healing is up and down. It's the energy is chaotic, but I will say it's, it's not, like I said, it's not linear. It's like, you know, some days their ego is acting up. Other days they're just vulnerable and open, but they're more vulnerable right now than I've ever felt them before when I, as I've been doing these readings, this is like the most vulnerable and emotional I've ever felt them. So they're really upset about something. They're really sad right now. I mean, it's like, it's a beautiful energy though. It's like, it's sadness, but it's like a cleansing kind of sadness where they're like, like they found themselves like, oh my gosh, I want to make things right with people. Like, I don't want to ever be that person again. Some of them might've quit an addiction that they had. Some of them might have been in like devil energy and they might have quit an addiction that was dragging them down, I feel, for some of them. Or maybe they had like toxic people or something around them that was like blocking them, you know, because I do get the energy of someone that liked to party a lot and it's like now they can't party a lot and they're stuck at home. So they're being forced to face themselves. You know what I mean? Like their little outlets that they had, like the defense mechanisms and things that like help them just keep running and running from, you know, true healing and true love and true emotion. It's so like those things have been ripped away from them. So now they're forced to face themselves and they're forced to, to do this deep, messy healing work. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's up and down. It's been up and down the past year where it's like, but it's been consistent. You know what I mean? Like there might be days when they're more in their pride and they're more like kind of stubborn, like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Like, I don't, I don't know about this. And there's days when they're really vulnerable, but overall, like, and they've been consistently changing this past year. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's up and down. It's, it's a struggle. It's, it's, the energy is kind of chaotic, but sometimes that chaotic energy is needed to get someone to move forward. So it's like, you know, there's always that little battle a little bit, like when this change comes in, like, like a little bit of resistance, but that resistance has been breaking down more and more over time. And now I just feel like they're really just, just, completely open like their their heart have just been pulled open like something something's made them make them really vulnerable right now I feel like they're missing you a lot yeah they're wanting to make a love offer why are they not making a love offer power struggle they might be afraid that it's going to be a power struggle or that you're not gonna maybe they're afraid that you're that it's just gonna be um yeah they're nostalgic for you they're nostalgic for an ex 
but they're scared if they if they reach out it's going to be a power struggle like chaser chasey power struggle like hmm like not on the same page or maybe they're afraid that like they're going to be chasing you or it's just like like you guys can never get the timing right and they're kind of afraid of that maybe they're afraid of going back to that pattern again I mean, it's like you were always chasing them or they were chasing you, but you guys were never just on the same page. It was always something going on with you two. They might be afraid of that pattern coming back around. Yeah, fear of rejection too was another reason. Um, hmm, shyness, fear of rejection. We have taking it slow, pulling them in, getting to know each other. And then we have submissive and weak-willed. So... Hmm, this is interesting. I feel like they're submissive with you in ways that they weren't before. I feel like there's also like a desire to take it slow just because they're so vulnerable right now and they're so afraid of this not working out. I think they're trying to decide right now, is it better to like... I hear like, is it better to have, you know, never loved at all or is it better to have loved and lost it? Um... Kind of like the energy of, um, like, do I want to, do they want to just hold the memory of you? Like, hold this pure memory of you? Or, they, or do they want to take a risk and see if this can be something again? Because they're kind of just afraid of, like, almost like they're just dreaming and, like, they're afraid of seeing you in a different light. Or they're, like, afraid of, like, they're in this, like, really vulnerable dream-like energy. And I think they're almost afraid if they send a message that that energy is going to be, like, destroyed, you know? Um... Like you're going to tell them off or you're going to ignore them. And it's like, you're, you're a part of their healing right now. I think that this energy that they're feeling with you is like helping them heal. Cause they're feeling all this, like you're putting them in touch with their emotions, you know, like you're like, par like part of them wanting to be a better person is because of you. They feel like you are their happiness and warmth and light and either, so it's going to be, there's two different stories. Some of them feel like you deceive them, like you are manipulative, like, like maybe what if this isn't as pure as I, like there's fear, like what if this isn't as pure and good as I think it is, you know, there's like a fear. Um, others feel like they were the, most of them feel like they were manipulative and they were deceptive and they were not appreciating your like angelic pure energy, like they weren't, they weren't doing you right. Um, what's their most likely action towards you within the next couple weeks? They're wanting to reveal this truth that they feel isolated and alone and empty, that the grass wasn't greener on the other side, that, you know, they are actually addicted to you. They do need you. They, they put on this front of independence, like they have it all together, but they're like, you know what? Like they're in that energy of like, I need someone. I need love. Like I need like that breakdown, you know, like. There's beauty in the breakdown. It's like that energy of just like I need not like in a desperate way, like in a beautiful way, like just like getting in touch with, you know, that human emotion of just like I I need love. I need happiness. I need family like they're they're realizing what really matters to them. It's not money or it's not it's not any of the things they thought it was. It's not their appearance. It's like they, you know, they're more attached to you than they realized. And the divine is trying to intervene to push them to reach out, but they keep overthinking it. Your person overthinks and overanalyzes and self-sabotage, self-sabotages, maybe tries to perfect themselves before coming forward. The passion and romance is there, though. Let me get a few more cards really quick. And like I said, if you want a private reading, my email address is below um, in the description box, so I can look more in depth into this for you if you want. Yeah, this is a potential life partner. There's just hesitation and mixed feelings and confusion. Like they want to, maybe they, maybe they don't know if they can be loyal and stable because it's like they want that with every, like they completely want that, but maybe they are afraid that they'll run again. Maybe it's just so deep and so passionate with you that it's like, it's, it's like they, you trigger their healing a lot. So this could be a twin flame for some of you because just the way or a soulmate at least I feel. I don't feel like this is a karmic. I feel like this is a soulmate or a twin flame. I'm thinking just because of the depth of this connection and how you guys trigger each other. I almost want to say for at least a few of you, I think this is a twin flame just because you guys like mirror each other. You trigger each other so much. 
and um, I feel like with you, you like you just you make them heal in a way that they don't even know how to heal. Like in such a deep, how do I explain that? It came out so weird. Okay, so basically they're on this healing process, this the healing path this past year, but there's a balance though. You know what I mean? Like they're feeling vulnerable and open, but it's like with you, they're just, they're so vulnerable and they don't, they're not used to that. They're not used to someone loving them the way that you love them. They're not, they're, it's like they question it. Like it's too good to be true. Like what's the catch? Like, is it really this easy? There's no drama. Like they're used to a power struggle. They're used to games. They're used to chaos in their lives. They're used to the drama. They might even be kind of addicted to the drama. You know, it might be part of their defense mechanism is just, you know, wanting what they can't have and being addicted to, you know, the drama and stuff. And with you, it's just like, it's so pure and it's so like, they feel like you have this light about you, like this angelic light and you're just so good. And it's just so like, everything's like normal. Everything's really just perfect. And they're like, they don't understand it. Like it makes them happy, but it freaks them out. Cause they're like, what's the catch? Like, it's almost like they feel like, like it's like a game, like it's like a setup or something, like things are just going to go wrong. Like they don't, it's, it's, what is that belief where it's like, you feel like if, if good things happen, like you don't want to let yourself believe in them because you feel like it's going to get taken away from you. I think this person has that belief where they, they don't trust good things in their life. And I think that you just make them a lot more vulnerable than you even realize that you do. So it's like, they feel like with you, like their vulnerability that they're feeling now would be amplified. You know what I mean? Like they would be, they would just be broken open and it freaks them out because they're like, what if I'm not good enough? Like what if, because they're finding themselves again, they're reclaiming their soul again and they feel a lot of guilt and regret and nostalgia. And so they're like, like, what if I'm not good enough for my person? What if, what if, what if you don't like the new them, you know, because they're, they've changed a lot. They've matured and they're more vulnerable and they might even be thinking like, what if you don't like the vulnerable them? Because maybe they played games and ghosted you before or they like um, talked down to you or maybe they were just kind of like all over the place or maybe there was like arguments and chaos and drama in your relationship, like breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, getting back together, that kind of energy. And maybe they're wondering like, what if my person like is into that drama. Like, what if, what if it's too normal for them? What if I'm too vulnerable and romantic and sappy for them now? What if I'm too sensitive for them now? What if they don't like the new me, you know? So there's like that fear because they've just been broken open and they don't know how you're going to take that. They don't know if they still have a chance with you. So there's a lot of like hesitation and mixed feelings and confusion here. Um, I am getting that it's a potential life partner though, and they are wanting the loyalty and stability. They might be afraid too that they can't offer you the loyalty and stability. Like maybe they cheated in the past and they're, um, some of them might have, because maybe it was like they sabotaged themselves, you know, like everything was too perfect and they wanted to hurt you before you hurt them, which is crappy, of course. But it's like, maybe it was that kind of energy where they're like, everything was so good that they're just like, it can't really be this good. Like this is, life is going to mess them up somehow. And it's like, almost like they have like gave themselves a panic attack. They're like, oh my gosh, like it's, it's not just going to be this normal and good. That doesn't make any sense. Like, and maybe they were like afraid that like you were going to end up dumping them or cheating. And they're like, I'm going to do that to them first. They're like, they're like, no, I'm not falling for this trick. There's no way this relationship is just normal and perfect. Relationships aren't like that. Love isn't like that. There's no such thing as love at first sight. Like they were getting lost in their feels and then they, they pull themselves out of it with their ego. And they were like, no, nah, this can't be real. This is too good to be real. I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> so they ghosted or they cheated or they ran or they did what they always do. And now they're, they're regretting it and they're not sure if they have a chance. And they're also just not sure if they can be loyal and stable because they're, they're feeling really broken open, but they're also like, well, what if I, what if I come back to you and I'm, I get scared again by the depth and the intensity of the connection. What if I get, if, get scared by how much we love each other? What if, what if it's too normal? What if it's too perfect for me? Like, what if I don't understand the energy? What if, what if I'm not used to this kind of relationship? What if I'm not used to someone seeing through me like you do? What if I'm not used to someone loving me as deeply and consistently as you do? What if I mess it up again? What if I get scared and panic and run again and hurt you? I don't want to ever do that to you again. So they're they're really confused. They're like, you know, not only do they not know if you'd give them a chance again, but they also don't know if they if they can stay in this currently current energy that they're in, you know? They're wanting this, but they don't, they doubt that they're capable of it. So 
Anyway, that's where I feel they're at. If you'd like a private reading, my email is below, like I said, and any donations are appreciated, even just a dollar. It really adds up quickly. My donation link is right below, PayPal or Cash App. And um, if this resonates, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.